Good morning and happy Vlogmas Day 14, everyone. Um, we're having a little bit of a crazy morning here. In fact, I'm just now um, getting to sit down and say good morning. Um, it, yeah, I'm just running behind. Just one of those mornings. So happy Friday. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to get up to today. I could, depending on the weather, if we've got a lot of sun, I may try and do some filming today. Now that I've got all these videos kind of um, figured out and slowly but surely getting my computer like situation figured out I may I may try and do some filming um, I definitely want to get down we'll see how I'm feeling I that may just wait till Monday um, but I definitely want to get down and work on my Kimberly dress some today so I'll definitely take you along with that um, but yeah that's kind of all we got going on today just a little bit of this a little bit of that so um, I'll take you along and we'll see what we can get up to okay 14 of Advent guys um so i'm not doing any filming today i looked at the weather and it's literally raining all day today so it's like that miserable rain because we are having a heat wave quote unquote it's like in the 40s so it's just a really cold rain so um i am going to work on my kimberly dress i think here in a little bit if i have thread that's the other thing i don't think i have any hot pink thread i literally have every color of the rainbow on my thread wall and I don't think I have any hot pink and if I have to go to Joanne's later I'm gonna be very annoyed so I might be able to make it work with a color I've got but anyway um, hopefully I can work on that in a little bit so anyway I kind of was just wanting to get your all's opinion on what you were um, wanting I was talking to my daughter a little bit and she's game for um, getting some stuff made for her. go figure <laughs> Um, so I think I might do just a couple of simultaneous, um, capsules, one for her and one for me, because we are two completely different body types. She has a small waist in comparison to her hip measurement. Um, she's much more hourglass than I am. So, um, that might be kind of fun. But anyway, I'm thinking I want to do a few versions of each of these patterns just to kind of show versatility of the patterns. And someone even mentioned, you know, how to dress them up for, you know, if you have a casual work environment versus just casual weekend wear. So anyway, um, I'm definitely thinking of making, I really, really love this version right here. Sorry, can you see the little hand? <laughs> this cropped wide leg version. I may do that in one of the corduroys that I unboxed the other day. That sounds very appealing to me. Um, or I may do it in that um, rose cotton twill that I also showed you. So we'll see. Uh, I'm going to play around with fabric here in just a minute. But I'm thinking of doing that version. I may do, I don't know, I just made my Morgan jeans. I don't know if I want to do a tapered leg right now. I may for my daughter, though. And I think I might also throw in a pair of shorts. So we are going to Florida this, this winter um, for a short little trip to visit my parents. But that's always a good, because they go down there for like nine weeks. Um, so we have a free place to stay. Um, but it's always a good excuse to get a little head start on some of my spring and summer sewing. Because I, you know, just to have a few new things while we're down there. And like I said, I am in desperate need of some shorts uh, just because my measurements have changed and, again, my butt's deflated. So I'm thinking maybe a pair of shorts might be kind of fun. And I may do a pair for my daughter as well. Uh, so we'll see how that goes with, like, you know, the gaping waistband and all that kind of stuff. And plus I think pants fitting can always be interesting. So um, if there's any other of these, like the tapered, the straight, that you guys would like to see, uh, cropped, full length, short, whatever, let me... Excuse me, I just had my second cup of coffee and now I have the burps here. Um, let me know. So that's kind of what I'm thinking on that one. Uh, with the Floriette, 
I probably won't do any in the woven just because number one, it doesn't have bust darts. And I realize yeah, I, I, I have to have bust darts. It just does not look good on me without bust darts unless it's a knit. So I think I may do, I probably won't make any of these up in woven, but I will do them in knit because this is for woven or knit fabrics. So I'm thinking maybe a dress in the knit and then I want to play around with the t-shirts. Um, maybe even a sleeveless one. The I think she calls it cropped version, but it doesn't look cropped. Um, well, I guess it just says view B is a blouse with long sleeves and C is a crop blouse with short sleeves. So maybe there is a difference in length there. But I love how she can use that little asymmetrical part there to tie at the waist. I think that's so cute. So there'll definitely be a couple of t-shirts. Maybe one with long sleeve, maybe one sleeveless, maybe a sleeveless dress. I don't know. I can play around with that a little bit. Or even, even out this hem and just have a neat, cute little knit dress, which could be really cute um, and is tempting to me. So anyway, that's what I, kind of what I'm thinking for the floor yet. The Jara, I think we can have a lot of fun with just because I feel like, I'm oh, sorry, my wrist is getting sore here. I feel like we can make such different um, versions depending on the fabric. So obviously with a sweatshirting fabric, you're going to get more of like the sweatshirt feel. A sweater net's going to, sweater knit is going to give it more of a dressier sweater feel, especially like this version here or this version, maybe with the turtleneck. I don't know. We can mix and match all of these variations so easily. Um, but the difference in sweatshirting knit versus a regular knit versus a sweater knit uh, and just really play around with these and make a, some great tops both good for like weekend wear, casual wear, and for uh, maybe if you're in a uh, business casual type work environment. I don't think any of this would go for like professional business wear, like if you work at a law firm or um, something along those lines where you have to. I worked at the Federal Reserve Bank um, when I was working <laughs> many, many years ago. Um, not when I was working, but you know, when I was working corporate and it was a very, um, professional wardrobe and like stuff like that. Well, maybe a sweater with like a pair of nice dress pants, but anyway, um, we could definitely make it business casual. And then last is the waddle skirt. There's quite a few of these that I want to make. I, again, I'm obsessed with midi stuff right now. So I think I, I will probably do all of these versions and I have, um, some wool plaids and stuff that are in my stash that I think would be great with tights, especially these short ones. This one right here, because it kind of looks like the school girl skirt kind of type thing. Very 90s, early 90s, which is my era. It's when I was in high school. So um, I really want to play around with this. And I believe the waistband on this and the pocket situation is like the flint pants, which I love. I think that is genius. So I am excited to try out really all of these versions. So anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm probably gonna go through some fabric right now and... Uh... Okay guys, I am in total planning mode right now and I kind of love when that happens. Um, okay, so let me tell you what I'm thinking for, this is all the Megan Nielsen capsule. <laughs> Look at all this fabric. I've been like yanking stuff out of my drawers as if I didn't have enough already pulled out. It's just, this is what happens. I'm very, for the most part, I'm not a neat neck, but I'm definitely very tidy in most areas of my life. And then you come into this room when the creative juices get flowing and it's like an explosion goes off. But that's okay. It's part of the process, right? Okay, so first for the dawn, um, this is the pant pattern. I have this here and this here are both cotton sateens. I think the gray, they both have a little bit of stretch to them. Um, not a lot, but a little bit, I think. Well... The pink, not as much. I guess neither of them really. A I mean, no, no. Neither of them have stretch. Sorry. <laughs> this is a pale pink. It's kind of hard to tell. And this is a gray. I've got the gray corduroy that I showed you the other day down here. Um, this is that rose cotton twill. This is some heavyweight white um, linen from the fabric store. And I made my lander shorts in July out of this. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have enough to get a pair of shorts. I would really want a pair of white linen shorts and, um, my landers, it, you know, the weight loss just really messed those up. So anyway, I won't make all of these, but what, what do you think? Um, cause I'm thinking maybe a pair of straight legged pants or even tapered pants in one of these cotton sateens would really dress the pattern up and be really cool. I'm thinking this white for a pair of shorts. Um, I like the idea of like a floor length wide leg in the corduroy, but I've got my lander pants that are similar to that. Uh, and I really like the idea of a cropped wide, 
wide leg in this one. And I also pulled this cone mill denim. It's a lighter wash cone mill denim, which might be kind of fun um, if I did a straight leg pair and then we could uh, compare and contrast the Morgan jeans to that. So, um, I don't know, let me know what you think on those. Again, I won't make all of these, but I like the idea of doing four of each pattern. So, one, two, three, four, five, I have six fabrics here, so I would need to cut two. But um, that's a thought. Okay, so then the next one was the Floriette, which is that knit dress, knit or woven dress, and I'm going to do it all in knits. So I thought it would be fun to play around with like different fabrications. I'm like literally walking or kneeling over a fabric here. So this is um, a rayon knit and I actually have bought it for pajamas. Um, I have made myself a pink robe. I have tons of this. I have like seven yards of this though. I have made nothing yet for myself for this. But again, a nightgown, because I was going to make myself the robe out of that, but it ended up being too thin when it came. So I made my robe out of like a sweatshirting, an organic sweatshirting fleece. So I just need to make some matching or coordinating pajamas out of this, but I've got plenty to play around with. So I thought a dress might be kind of fun in this, like even a long sleeve dress that you could wear. I don't know if it'd be too thin. You could wear it with tights though in the winter and then um, not with tights in the spring weather if you wanted to. Then I have this other bamboo jersey here that I thought would be, um, look at that sheen, isn't it pretty? Uh, this was a Black Friday from Stone Mountain and Daughter. Yes, I think this one came from Stone Mountain and Daughter. And um, I'll leave links to the fabric stores I'm mentioning below. But it's a, a pale pink, and I think that could make a really cool floriette top. I also have, this also came from Stone Mountain and Daughter, and it is an organic cotton, cotton knit. So it doesn't have as much drape. And this is a cotton knit as well. This is the one that I bought in Nashville. Um, but I thought I could do some fun, like, floriette tops in these. They could be worn with my dons or my waddle skirts. So let me know what you think. I also have this stretch velvet um, in this gorgeous shade of green. It's coming across much darker on camera than what it is. This is kind of more true color. So it's like a... Um, this is the back of it, and it's, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's not an olive green. Um, it's just really pretty. <laughs> and I like the idea of having a velvet top. I think I have two yards of this. So I could do a dress. Um, I made my daughter a dress, though, in the pink colorway of this, so she may not want me to have a similar dress. But a top would be really fun, and just some added texture. So this one's kind of an outlier. I could do this in the Floriette or the Jara. Jara? Jara? Whatever. Okay, so this is, we'll go on to the Jara next. So I have this um, bamboo, I think it's bamboo, I'm pretty sure. I just, this is one of the ones from Blackbird that I just opened up, that I thought would be a neat turtleneck version of the Jara. From my stash, I have this really pretty, it's kind of hard to see, but it's a quilted sweatshirting. And I want to do like a legitimate sweatshirt out of that because I have coordinating ribbing um, that I can use for the cuffs and the bottom band and the neck band and stuff. Then I have this cloud sweater knit that also came from, gosh, I'm even forgetting. This is a Black Friday haul. I think this came from Stone Mountain and Daughter. Stone Mountain and Daughter and... Blackbird or where I spent a large chunk of my money <laughs> and then I got a decent amount at uh, the fabric store and smuggler's daughter so those were the four that I hit up from on Black Friday for fabric but this is one of those cloud nets that's super soft um, I think it's got some acrylic in it but oh my gosh it feels like cashmere um, I mean it's not but oh lovely and I've made stuff with this before but I thought this in a jara would look interesting I mean just the difference between a bamboo knit a sweatshirting knit and a sweater knit have the difference that you could make with that top and make it dressier or more casual or whatever. And then I have this sweatshirt of my husband's. It's a polo sweatshirt in this gorgeous lavender color. It looked so pretty on him, but it's just really boxy and ill-fitting. I think they got it at the outlet um, and it just has never fit him right. And so he gave it to me. So, ha ha. <laughs> but I thought we could do another like refashioning um, Jara where I leave the quarters up um, you know, in the low, in the emblem and stuff. So I thought that would be maybe a fun, um, you know, how I like my upcycling and refashions and the co color is just gorgeous. So that might become a refashion how you can, I mean, cause you could do thrifted men's sweaters very easily. Okay. Ooh. And then for the waddle skirt, I pulled some of these. I have pulled here. I'll do this one last. 
So I'm loving bringing some camel into the wardrobe. This is a wool um, camel that I've, a camel colored wool that I've had and it's suiting weight. It's fairly thin, but I love the idea. Um, and it's got, I mean, it's not as thin though as you would think. Cause it's got like this, this backing. I got this at my local fabric store. Uh, anyway, this would make a gorgeous, gorgeous skirt that you could wear, you know, every day or wherever. This fabric I got at um, SR Harris when I was in Minneapolis a few years ago. It is, it feels like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what's in it because if you've ever been to SR Harris in Minneapolis, it is like, it's just a gigantic warehouse and you're just grabbing things and you cut it yourself and it's pretty phenomenal. There is a very pale, you can hardly see it, blue stripe, like a baby blue stripe that goes through this. I love this idea um, for that little kilt version of the waddle. I think that would just be so wonderful. And then this is that leopard crepe. And I talked about doing the Kimberly dress in this and I've decided against it only because it's pretty thin. And then I was like washing it and all of a sudden it dawned on me what a great shift dress this would make. And I have three meters of this. So that's more than three yards, three meters of this. So I think a skirt and a shift dress in this would be amazing. And it would be like the gift that just keeps giving. <laughs> So uh, one of the views of that waddle were like a midi skirt, um, and that may be what this becomes. Rosabella, uh, Rosa from Rosabella Angelica from Sewn, the YouTube channel Sewn, did a leopard print midi skirt. Um, I think she even did a tutorial with it, with making pleats with a fork. Anyway, I've been obsessed with that skirt, and she wears it quite often and on her you know DIY outfit of the days on Instagram, and I just feel like I need a um, midi animal print skirt in my life. And again, this is such a nice, it's not super thin, but this is such a nice poly crepe that I think it will, um, my arm looks really pink in this shot. <laughs> I think that will just hang beautifully and just be gorgeous. Then uh, I thought it would be fun. I have three yards of this Ponty. This is a Ponty knit in this pale blue, but I thought it would be fun to do the waddle in a Ponty. And there, um, one of the views is just a knee length skirt with a little tie. And this, you know, Ponty is such a stable knit that you can easily do woven patterns with it. Um, and then I can kind of show you how to tweak a pattern that you want to make in a knit, because clearly I don't need the ease, especially in the waist, if I'm going to do a knit that I would need in these other ones. So I thought that might be kind of an interesting thing to um, show you as well as we get along with this. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Um, if there's anything else you kind of wanted to see with the Megan Nielsen um, capsule. So this will all be happening at the beginning of January. And this may all happen in January, only because I have my sewing retreat at the end of January, which means that will be like four days, well, really like three and a half because we leave on Sunday. But it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday of doing nothing but sewing for like 12 hours a day. That and eating and sitting in a hot tub. So <laughs> I get an amazing amount of stuff done in that amount of time. So anyway... Lots of knits, which is exactly what I wanted, but some wovens. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, I pulled myself away from planning to work on my Kimberly dress a little bit. <laughs> okay, because I'm not putting a facing in my Kimberly, I am going to go ahead and stay stitch my necklines. You should always do that. I've already stay stitched the back. But since there's not going to be a facing um, with interfacing, it's a lot of facing in there, um, for my neckline because I'm fully lining it, so I won't use the facing because of that, I wanted a little extra line of defense here. So I have put some of that woven stay tape um, that I showed you. I used it for my knit top. I can leave a link to it again, though. It's this, the half inch, and I want it in the seam allowance. So I've set it a little ways away because it's a 5 eighths, 5 eighths seam allowance. So I've just pressed the woven stay tape in there to keep that, especially that V, um, nice and crisp. Um, especially because after, you know, you've sewn and stuff, you will clip in here. Uh, I'm assuming. I haven't looked at the instructions all the way through yet. But I'm going to go ahead and stay stitched now. But yes, I'm doing that to help keep that neckline in shape. Okay, this is all in the name of fitting. <laughs> you cannot say I don't love you guys because I am putting this on this get up. I am currently in leggings. Okay, so here is my Kimberly blouse. And I wanted to, this is not lined yet. I just wanted to put it on to determine how I feel about the armhole. Um, I'm just holding it back here. Uh, my darts are also wonky. This is hard. I don't have any closure like sewn into the back. So I'm just going to need to hit that, that 
with a little more steam. But I want to show you guys what happened here under the arm. Oh, this is hard to show. We'll go on this side. All right. See where, um, excuse the deodorant in my arm here. But see the jog there from the back to the front? That is from where I was truing up this front armhole to look more like a natural armhole. So I am just going, I'm literally just going to go in and like trim, trim that because see, it's also coming into the back of my arm a little bit. Now again, this will have five eighths of an inch off of it. Sorry, <laughs> this is hard. Five eighths of an inch will be off of it. So it's going to sit right at the top of my shoulder. Ideally, well, this is going to have some off of it too, because that will be, I think that's going to be good though for layering purposes. I will always have either a sweater over it or like a turtleneck under it. So I'm literally just going to go and I'm going to chop and true up that back arm piece there and then do the same to the lining. Um, hit my darts a little bit better. They're sitting better on that side. I think it's just because I don't, I'm literally wearing this just draped over me at the moment. But give those little darts a press but this is coming I think I'm really gonna like this um I think it's really gonna fit well when all is said and done okay so I'm gonna trip those armholes really quickly the better look on my ham here so there's my front armhole that remember I trimmed that up a little bit um anyway I have like probably three quarters of an inch that's standing up more I did match it up at my hem well most part it's fine um, but I am just going to go through with my scissors and do a nice curve and go to nothing at my double notches so that's what I'm going to do there for the sleeveless version and I'm going to do the same to the lining pieces and then I'm going to attach um, them together at the neckline and the armholes and leave the back open because I will put a zipper in as soon as the skirts attached another quick tip I have, um, sorry, okay, so I have cut the area off of here, um, that, that jog, and this is the wedge that I have cut off. So in order to make them identical on both sides, take this little wedge, hold on, bear with me a moment, we're going to go to the other side. And there's the jog on the other side. And I'm going to match this up. I'm going to turn it over because obviously. And there's my little notches that I trued it up to nothing. And I'm just going to lay this right along there. And then cut this one, that same wedge out. And I'll do the same to the pattern pieces. And that way everything will be off. And what I could also do is if I decided to make this permanent to the pattern, um, which I might just go ahead and do, I can take this wedge and put it on my paper pattern and um, trim that off the paper pattern that way as well. So just a little tip there for you. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to give you guys a quick tip. I just love this. I just think of tips and I just come on here to share them. So I am pressing, I have un, you know, sewn my um, lining in and understitched it, which has there ever been a bigger like magic trick to sewing than understitching? I don't feel like it should ever work and it always works beautifully. But anyway, that's not why I'm on here. When you are pressing, um, especially wool, I guess silk too, um, wool is made from protein. It's a protein fiber like, and so is silk because it comes from an animal, such, you know, wool being the hair, basically, of a sheep or a goat or whatever. So when you are pressing, and you know, and I'm sure if you guys have sewn with wool before, you notice how well it takes to steam, and it's just very easy to mold, and that's why most tailoring, they'll use um, uh, wool. But one tip, when you are pressing and steaming your wool, if you will press it, you know, hit it with the steam, and let it cool in place, that will set the press. So think of it like um, hair. If you try and curl your hair and it's still a little damp, it doesn't hold the curl. Same type of thing. So if you press it, let it dry kind of, or, or at least get cool, it will hold the press as opposed to just steaming and then moving it again, it won't hold its shape. That is just a little quick um, 
wool tip I had for you. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys a little trick. If you are busty, like I am, and I don't use my um, mannequin for fitting really, but it is nice if I'm like marking hems or that kind of stuff, but nothing hangs right because it like is sags in the boobs and so the front like hangs down real low so it's not true. Um, take an old bra, stuff it with just like polyfill like I've done here, and there you go. It's kind of like padding out your um, mannequin a little bit, but this is much more... Um, and this is an adjustable mannequin, but it's much more true to my body type. So I have my Kimberly dress finished, except the lining needs to be hand sewn to the waist. And the hem has not been done. I've not added the hem band yet because I want the skirt to fall. Because it's a half circle skirt, I believe. And I want the hem to fall. Um, so that I can even it all out because it's on the bias. And I this crepe usually falls like crazy. So I'll show it to you on the mannequin. Hold on. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell because she's hot pink on my fuchsia colored mannequin but she's finished except for the hem so I'm gonna let that fall um, and I need to hand sew the uh, silk lining um, at the waistband so you can kind of see some puckeries there because I've got pins um, where that's pinned but yeah she is in and again this mannequin doesn't fit me perfectly so disregard all of this extra if this is not extra on me <laughs> but the I just need the waist to match up in the same spot all the way around, and then I can uh, mark my hem once it has fallen the appropriate amount. So, there we go. And she's already fallen a little bit. You can kind of see where the sides, which is what will fall the most, have art because they're cut most on bias, have already fallen a little bit. So, there we go. I'm going to stop for today. I've made the tie belt and I've made the hem band. I'm just going to wait and attach it once um, the skirt has fallen and everything's evened out. Okay, guys. So, um, it's not really the end of the day yet. I mean, the sun is still, like, shining. But um, kids are home and it's Friday. And so, really, the rest of the day, we're just going to be kind of hanging out. Maybe watching a movie tonight, that kind of thing. Um, having dinner. I've got ribs in the crock pot, so that's going to be good. Barbie, or, um... Blackberry barbecued sauced ribs for dinner tonight. Yum, yum. Uh, so that is us for this evening. But I'm just going to go ahead and say goodnight or goodbye just so I can get things uploaded. It's just our internet's been so slow lately, so it's just been taking forever. So hopefully that can get uploaded tonight so you guys can have it um, first thing in the morning. So have a – I hope you've enjoyed following me around and listening to my ramblings yet again. <laughs> um, I don't know that there's going to be a lot of sewing happening this weekend. I've got quite a few um, – errands and stuff like that that I need to, to run. But I'll take you guys along with me and you can definitely join in on the merriment we get into this weekend. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Happy Friday!